we now have the first PC PS5 exclusive. So the first game that on console was a PS5 exclusive, no PS4 support, any of that, uh, that is now being ported to PC. Now it came with some hefty system requirements, although the minimum system requirement was listed as a GTX 1066 gigabyte, which we're testing out here at both the Epic preset and the low preset side by side. However, on the minimum system requirements list, it was listed for low at 720p, 60 frames per second. We're seeing that sure enough at epic settings, it dips well below 30 FPS with the 1% lows down around 20. And even at the low settings at 1080p, well, our averages is more in the uh, mid to upper 40 FPS range. We certainly do dip to around 30 FPS at times. And so the GTX 1060 here is certainly struggling. Now we're using the game's built-in benchmark. It has a very extensive one. And it also monitors things like the RAM usage. Now I'm also running my own MSI Afterburner stats over the top of this so we can see more detailed information because it seemed like the built-in benchmark was misreporting the CPU usage as too low, unless it means how CPU limited you are, but it's a little unclear there. Uh, I think the CPU usage stats I'm seeing from my uh, afterburner stats here, which I'm showing you per core. This is an eight core, 16 thread CPU with the Ryzen 7 7700X. Uh, and you can see the per core usage here. Um, again, a lot higher than what the built-in benchmark is reporting. Now, one thing about the system requirements that was interesting was it rep reported a 16 gigabyte requirement and a 32 gigabyte recommendation when you're going up to the like 4K epic settings and things like that. But we can see here the benchmark and my stats are only reporting a little over five gigabytes of RAM usage on the system RAM. Now it's interesting to note here that there is a lot of scalability. The low settings were 41% faster on average than the Epic settings on the GTX 1060. It just still wasn't enough to get it to 60 FPS. So what I thought I'd look at here is what if we upscaled a bit. I'm using NIS upscaling here. The game also has FSR upscaling, but it's FSR 1.0, which is very similar to NIS. It's a spatial upscaler. It didn't seem to have any FSR 2. Um, but this was able to get us to a 60 FPS average, although the 1% lows were down around 41, you were certainly dipping below 40 at, uh, below 60 at times. Well, how about we now jump to the most powerful gaming GPU on the planet with the RTX 4090. And I'd like us to look at um, ray tracing on versus off, and it's um, on on settings, we're at epic. So this, and this is native 4K resolution. So basically, max the game out on the most powerful GPU uh, and see how it goes. You can also see the side-by-side -side of RT on and off. This game has ray traced reflections and ray traced shadows, and they have a variety of quality settings going from low, medium, height, and then to epic. And again, I hear I've got it completely maxed out. We can see that the uh, 4090 certainly takes a performance hit to enable ray tracing although it's still able to get a high average FPS. Here in the puddles, you'll see one of the biggest differences with the ray traced reflections. Um, the ray traced shadows to me, I mean, I can see that there are differences, but as usual for me, I'm never very impressed by ray traced shadows. Um, the ray traced reflections are more noticeable, but again, there is a large performance hit here. And we'll test out some less powerful GPUs uh, before the video is over with and we'll see that while well, the 4090 might be get a, be able to get away with just maxing everything out um, Not every GPU is going to we can see though that the VRAM usage even with ray tracing enabled at 4k native resolution Is only sitting at around 8 gigabytes So this game is not super heavy on the VRAM or on the RAM so um, that's actually pretty good news compared to what the system requirements might have led us to believe. Um, but anyway, we're seeing overall good performance here. There are certainly more demanding games. And also this is a game that's not crushing the CPU when using ray tracing like we've seen in some other recent games. Uh, but one thing I do want to mention as a bit of a downside is that even though the game does pre-compile shaders, I'm showing you run number one on the left and run number two on the right, and watch the frame time graph. Watch the frame time spikes on the left-hand side. This is my RTX 4090. This is um, 
4K Epic with the RT Epic settings. This is with DLSS quality enabled so we can see the performance gain, but I also want to show you Run 1 versus Run 2 because of those uh, frame time graph spikes. So despite the pre-compiled shaders, um, there are stutters in this game. Jumping a bit ahead in the benchmark because we don't really need to see the whole thing. You can see the overall averages, so performance here is great with DLSS quality. Um, but yeah, stutter struggle continues with Unreal Engine despite the shader pre-compilation. And I did notice that the stuttering seemed to be worse with ray tracing enabled than without it enabled. But let's go ahead and jump down to some more realistic GPUs uh, in kind of the, the mid-range. So here we see the 3060 Ti versus the 6700 XT from AMD. These are generally fairly close competitors. Usually the 6700 XT is a little bit ahead in rasterized performance and falls behind in ray tracing performance. Well, here's uh, Epic rasterize no, um, at 1440p, no ray tracing at this point. Uh, both GPUs are averaging over 60 FPS. Um, with dips below, we can see the 1% lows are 44 and 43 respectively. So overall pretty good here. The VRAM does not seem to be an issue on the 8GB 3060 Ti. Uh, as we'd seen like in you know Hogwarts Legacy, we did see the VRAM become an issue. But like I said, this game does not seem to be particularly heavy on the VRAM usage. And if we want to see the overall comparison here, uh, the 6700 XT was I think about 8% faster or so. Um, <clears throat> with the ray tracing off. Now, if we drop down to 1080p, we're going to now see that both of them are performing even better. Much fewer dips below 60 FPS, even the 1% lows are at 50 and 56 respectively. So both GPUs performing very well here at 1080p epic settings. Now I didn't have time to test out a bunch of other GPUs, but what this is telling me again is you can kind of see where your scales from here. Um, you know, the 3060 and the 6600 GPUs, you know, would be a bit slower, but if you're using them at 1080p, there's certainly a lot of wiggle room here. And again, this is at the epic graphics preset. Um, we're not even, uh, you know, turning down to high or medium or low. And as we saw when we tested the GTX 1060, there was a lot of scalability here going all the way, uh, you know, we saw 41% improvement on the 1060 when we dropped from epic to low. And here again, we're seeing the 6700 XT about 8% faster at rasterize. I think on the um, 1440p, it was actually only about 6 or 7% faster, but pretty similar. Um, anyway, but if we enable ray tracing to the epic settings, do you see the water here? There's purple on the AMD GPU that I don't think is supposed to be there if you look at the actual environment. I'm not sure where that purple's coming from. So it seems like there might be some sort of a bug in the ray traced reflections for AMD here. Um, other than that, it's looking pretty similar other than the performance with once again the uh, expected result, which is that while the 3060 Ti is a bit behind in non-ray trace performance, it does pull ahead in ray tracing performance. Now the 6700 XT is getting very close to a 60 FPS average, although it is dipping below. Uh, the 3060 Ti is closer to a 70 FPS average, so there is a pretty noticeable difference here. Um, I, I'll run the numbers in, in editing, but I'm off the top of my head, I would I think that's about a 20% uh, performance advantage uh, for the 3060 Ti with ray tracing epic enabled. Uh, but again, the ray tracing settings can be scaled down. Um, and so that's what we'll look at here is what if we took the RX 6700 XT and reduced the ray tracing settings down to medium for both the shadows and the reflections. And if we do that, we're able to claw back a good chunk of performance, nothing mind blowing, about 12% um, throughout the benchmark run. But that this is gonna help keep the average um, and the frame rate overall more consistently closer to 60 FPS. Although we can see here that there are certainly still dips below 60. So I think in general, again, the, the reflections do look nice. The shadows aren't blowing me away. And if you're looking at, by the way, at the like epic RT versus the medium RT, are you guys seeing any massive differences? I think in the water, you can see a bit more reflection stuff going on here. And again, there's that purple color showing up, which seems wrong. And it's happening at both the medium setting and the epic setting. Um, 
But at least throughout this benchmark run, I'm not seeing a massive degradation to the quality by going down to medium. Um, but I think overall, I think on a lot of GPUs, uh, people will want to just turn off the ray tracing, especially if I'm correct that we get more stutters with the ray tracing enabled. That's certainly how it has felt to me, but I haven't had unlimited time to uh, really test that out overall. Anyway, I'm uh, excited to play this game. Overall thoughts on the game, I've only got to play it a little bit, but it's, it's a roguelike. Um, so if you don't like the idea of you die and you come back and, you know, you get some permanent prog progression, but not all of it, like, this game, kind of game is not going to be for everybody. Although it seems to be right up my alley, so I'm really excited for it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.